بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We start first and foremost by praising the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth, the Giver, the Taker, the Maker, the Breaker, the One who watches everything, the One who sees everything, the One who has information about everything, that which you see and that which you don't. We send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Master, our Teacher and our beloved Prophet. My brothers, I see a lot of beautiful young faces. And we're back. We're back at the camps. I ask you, my brother, how much changed in your life since the last camp? I'm starting to see regular camp faces. And I'm one of them. Wallahi, it was this gathering. It was this camp that changed my life for good. <coughs> The boys still have, I think, the footage. When I went to my first camp, I was clean shaven, single, doing the ghadab, doing the haram, living the life. And I went to one of the camps in Keola Beach, I remember. And I sat in one of those gatherings. And from that day, it changed me forever, inshaAllah ta'ala. My brothers, I see a lot of young faces, man. Many faces who within themselves, they think, you know what, brother, I got a long time to go, man. I'm young, brother, I'm young. My brothers, I've had the most interesting five weeks of my life. I've buried almost eight brothers in the last five weeks. All of which were under the age of 25. All of which were under the age of 25 years old. And they didn't die because they were sick. They didn't die because, you know what, he had some illness that doctors couldn't work out. No, perfectly fine boys. Wallahi, one of them, one of them, 18 years old, built like a tank. We actually had to bend his legs when we put him into the ground. He was so big, we actually couldn't fit him into the hole. We actually had to bend his legs to get him in there. under the age of 25 and ask me how many of them prayed none of them how many of them were familiar with Quran none of them this this is what the people around them are telling me this is what their friends are telling me My brothers, you sit here hopeful, thinking I have a long life. What gives you this hope, my brother? Go to the cemetery, please. I urge you, go to the cemetery. And look, and read the tombstones. But gone are the days when, you know, Wallahi, I remember growing up, death belonged to Abu Ali and Abu Ahmad who's done Hajj and all of his kids are now married and you know he's got grandkids he's 70 years old he's croaking a white beard those days are long gone you know I'm 30 now and for the most part of my life every funeral I went to was in the old section of Rookwood Cemetery in the last few years we filled up that one plus two new sections that they gave us and we're already halfway through the new one that they gave us. And 70% of these people that are buried there, 70% are under the age of 35 years old. <coughs> and yet we're still running amok in this world. We're still running amok. My brother's life is serious, man. I hate to break it to you, Wallahi. You know, I can sit here and give you this nice, beautiful talk with the Indian background dancers, Aflam Hindi. I can do that for you, inshallah, and make you feel good. You know, brothers tell me, brother, why have you become so pessimistic? Why don't you speak about the mercy of Allah, the rahmah of Allah? Give people hope. 
Sometimes hope in the wrong hands, hope in the wrong hands can actually destroy the person. One of the great companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I believe it was Ma'ad bin Jabal, I believe it was him. On his deathbed, khalas, last days in his life, He speaks between him and Allah. <coughs> Conversation now between him and Allah. He says, Ya Allah, you know that I lived my whole life in fear of you. He says, Ya Allah, I lived my whole life in fear of you. And now, Ya Allah, I'm on my deathbed. Khalas, I'm dying. I'm going. I'm leaving. Now, Ya Allah, even if I wanted to do something, I physically can't say, Ya Allah, I'm asking now. Now I'm knocking on the door of your Rahmah. Ya Allah, now I'm knocking on the door of your mercy. He says, I lived my whole life in what? In fear. But now, Ya Allah, khalas, I've reached an age where even if I wanted to do something, I can't. I'm too old. I'm too fragile, I'm too brittle, I'm too sick, I actually can't get out of the bed. Now, Ya Allah, now at this moment of my life, I'm knocking on the door of your mercy, Ya Allah, I'm asking that you have rahmi upon me. I ask you, my brother, sincerely, did this companion not know the verses of rahmah? No, he knew it. But he knew, my brothers, that his life is serious. Brothers, you only get one shot. There's no coming back. There's no coming back. You only get one shot at life. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Wallahi, wallahi. Brothers, brothers, I'm lowering them into the ground. And the faces around me are crying. And family is breaking down. And people are in confusion. Wallah, it was an accident. Wallah, he wasn't supposed to be there. Brother, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. This is rubbish. It's rubbish. My brothers, in Islam, there's no such thing as wrong place, wrong time. Do you know what you're saying? Indirectly, what you're saying is Allah made a mistake when Audhu Billah. No, my brother, he was at the right place at the right time. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to take his life. So I ask you, my brother, how will you be when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your life? Why is it that we're 20 and 25 and 26 and 30 and we still feel like we're young? Brother, what made you young? My brothers, you have one shot at life. One shot. There's no coming back. You can't come back to fix things up. Please, my brother, wallahi, I'm begging you, not for my sake, for your sake, make it right, man. Make it right. My brothers, wallahi, I look into the eyes of the people in front of me and I know we've had a rough past. We've been down some bad roads. We've got enough to a bad start, but this is the place to make it right. Maybe some of you came here because your mate forced you. Maybe it happens. Maybe some of you came here because his wife has been doing his heading for the past six, seven weeks. And bro, I just need a break. Maybe that's why you're here. Or maybe you're here because you know what? At home, my mum and dad, they never let me go anywhere. So at least if I come under the disguise of a camp, I can run amok. Maybe that's why you're here. Allahu Alam. And maybe some of you are here because you know what? I used to be on Dean for a couple of years. Well, I haven't shown my face in the UMA. I feel bad. Maybe if I go to the camp, I can save face. I don't know. Whatever the excuse is, you came with one intention. This is the time to change that intention. This is the time to change that intention. Ya Allah, we're here for your sake. Ya Allah, I'm here because I'm sick. You know what this place is, my brothers? You know what this gathering is? This is the hospital. This is the hospital. Why? Because we're all sick. When you go to the hospital, not everyone has the same sickness. 
There's the junkie. There's the one who broke his arm. There's the one who's mentally sick. There's the one who's physically crippled. Not everyone in the hospital is sick. There's the doctors. There's the patients. There's the family. There's the visitors. This is the hospital. And we've all come here to put our hearts before Allah Azza wa Jal. We're all here to make tawbah. Here, there's no status in this room. We're all equal. We're all sick. Some of you probably don't pray. So you're looking at me thinking, but this guy's got a beard down to his gut. Uh, what sickness does he have? Wallahi, there are sicknesses in this heart, my brothers, and I'm not being humble. Not being humble. Don't ever think that shaitan will allow you to... Don't think that, you know what, when I come on deen, shaitan khalas it. No, 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 there are sicknesses in this heart. There are sicknesses that don't show on the outside, but only Allah knows them on the inside. There's pride, there's riyat, there's showing off, there's thinking I'm better than this person, and better than... We're all sick. This is the hospital. And we've come here to fix this. And as brothers, we're here to support one another. I'm telling you, like I was telling you before, this camp changed my life. Before I came, was it in 05? Ahmed, was it in 05, my first camp? I think it was in 05 or in 04, I can't remember. 05 and 04. Some of you, you've been coming to camps for a while now, and you're thinking, yeah, you know what? This camp, you will only get out what you put in. This is a tool. When I went to my first camp, I never knew brothers, never knew uh, Mahabba, praying together. Well, I never knew any of this. But I've seen something special. And in my heart, Wallahi, in my heart, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a part of it. So I made friends with Fulan and made friends with Fulan and I met the Sheikh for the first time. And you know, but I was hungry. And then what happens? The brother said to me, brother, you know, we have the UMA. Yeah, we have this Dawah group. You can come and you can join us. This camp will not change anything. If you're going to come to the camp and go home, let me break it to you now. Wallahi, let me break it to you now. You'll have fun. Yeah, you'll taste something nice, but you're going to go home empty-handed. This, this is the place you make decisions. I make decisions. When I go back, this is what I want. So I went back, met the boys. One camp became another, third, fourth. Wallahi, from that day till now, I've never, ever missed a camp. Never missed the camp. Why? Because the heart wants it, bro. The heart wants it. And then from being in the environment, uh, camps became khutbahs, became t taking, taking the boys out, became dawah, became jawla, changed my life. And this is what we want, my brothers. This is what we want. You want to die in this environment. You want to die like this? You don't want to die. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. Ahwal, man. Ahwal. Ahwal. And brothers come up to me. Imagine. All right? Brother is dying. No salah. Clean shaven. Uh, 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 in the state of zina. One brother was actually in the state of zina. Yeah? And then his friend comes up to me with tears in his eyes. He says to me, brother, is he going to Jannah? Man kala la ilaha illallah dakhal al jannah. My brother, if this is your understanding of deen, wallahi, you're in a world to hurt, man. Yes, man kala la ilaha illallah dakhal al jannah, yes. But there's a prerequisite, my brother. If I say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but I don't believe in angels, is there jannah for me? I don't believe in Quran, is there jannah for me? I don't believe in hellfire in paradise. Is there Jannah for me? But the hadith says, Man qala la ilaha illallah dakhla al jannah. No, my brother, no, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. So my brothers, I don't want to take too much of your time. This is why we're here. Don't waste this camp. Don't waste it with foolish talk. 
And you know, no, no. If we're hanging out, we're here to speak about Allah. I want to hang out with those brothers who are older than me. I want to speak to those brothers who are involved in da'wah. I want to get involved. Otherwise, wallahi, my brother, you're just another face in the crowd, man. You're just another face in the crowd. And we don't want that, man. But don't you want to stand before Allah on levels? I don't understand. Well, like sometimes I look at faces, but aren't you hungry for it? Don't you want Jannah? I don't know. What, what, maybe I'm become an extremist, but you, you, don't you want Jannah? Don't you want to see Rasulullah and hug him? Don't you want to run to the companions? Don't you want to meet him? Don't you want to say, I made it, bro. I made it. I made it. Rasulullah says, I long to see my brothers. Imagine Rasulullah standing with Sahaba says, I long to see my brothers. Sahaba looked at each other and said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, we're your brothers. He says, No, you are my companions. My brothers are those who will come after me. They will believe in me though they've never seen me. And one of them is prepared to give up. One of them is prepared to give up his family and his wealth just to lay his eyes on me. That you want to see Rasulullah? So inshallah my brothers, this is it. Wallahi, these are the camps. These are the camps. You need to start thinking from now. When I go back, what am I doing? See, usually the boys have this talk when? At the end of the camp. And they will do it. But you, you, inside of you, if you want levels, think now. Come to the brothers, come to Livdi, come to Bas, come to whoever it is. Tell him, brother, please, man, I want him. I want him, bro. I want to be involved. So inshallah ta'ala, I ask that every single one of you, you take these next few days serious. And wallahi, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this changed my life. The man that stands before you, I can confidently say, I can confidently say it started from a camp. It started from a camp. So the ball's in your court. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa natubu.